one on ones. I, I I watch. If you know everybody watching Paul, I personally watch defense line and offense line one on ones because that's just what I like. Um, <laughs> I noticed that you have a tendency of driving your man backwards consistently. Is there tricks to the trade? I mean, to have be that dominant in in a one on one drill. Me personally, I would love to give you a good answer on that one, but I'm just bigger than a lot of those guys. So I just, you know, I just get the good lean and then it's over with afterwards, you know? So I mean, um, but even though uh, I try to work on things that I'm not good at, you know, because you can only push a guy for so long, so many times in a full game. So I try to work on things that I may be able to use in a game, you know, like probably uh, catch him off guard with maybe a swipe move or mainly a dominant rip of some sort and then try to do a little something off top of that. But if I get that good lean, that good push, it's, it's over with afterwards. Christian named you, like he singled you out as a guy who's been having a tremendous start to camp. Um, and, you know, we, you know, like I said, we've seen you dominate in 11 on 11s and one-on-ones. Um, did anything change this offseason? I mean, do you feel it's different? Obviously, you're a vet, but just how are you feeling overall at this point in your, your career and um, just, you know, entering another year? Um, I, I like to say this thing in, in the group, always uh, – there's two things I always say. I always say, be yourself, right? Like when somebody says something, or my comments, be yourself. It's another thing I always say, enjoying the process, right? So I think um, to last this long in the league, you know, uh, if you're not enjoying the process, then there's no reason for you to be here. So I think that's really like motivating me to, uh, to be relevant, right? And, um, and the guys, right? Like everybody is here from last year. You know, and I was with Christian in 2019, Zach Saylor 2019, you know, and I had opportunity to be with uh, uh, Ray and uh, Benito, you know, and, and build a relationship with those two guys. So we're still here, and it's a good thing to, to have the same room that you was with last year. So I enjoy that process and trying to get better. We got, like, a brotherhood and, and Og, and so um, that's one of the things. And I appreciate Christian for uh, – it, it, it's a lot for one of your peers, like one of your teammates to recognize, you know what I mean, to, to give you that type of uh, appreciation, right? Some of the fellas trimmed weight. Are you, did you stay stable or did you try to trim a little too? Nah, I trimmed. I trimmed. It may not look like it, but I, I trimmed. You know you yeah, yeah, you know. You know, it, it's tough, man, because um, when you – uh, I've been uh, somewhat of a journeyman, right? Like, let's let's be real with each other. I've been like a journeyman. So some teams they want me a little heavy. Some teams they want me light. And then it's like, okay, when I get to a team that want me light, then um, I gotta work, right? But um, I'm just a workaholic, regardless what my role or situation is. Whatever they need me to do, I'm gonna get it done. That's how I try to go about it. So I'm um, working on a six pack. I know uh, it's not there yet, but it, it will be. Y'all be impressed. Y'all be impressed. How do you kind of balance mentorship with relating to guys that are maybe seven, eight, nine years younger than you? Um, listening, listening. You know, uh, I've been. I had a. Uh, I was fortunate enough to have some good vets. Right when I first came in the league, uh, y'all know uh, T. Arm said is here. You know, Moore said those two guys I was with um, in New Orleans. Right, and. When me and Armstead got in the league, I had like Jonathan Vilma, you know, I had like Kenyon Coleman, Jabari Greer, all those guys, you know, uh, rest in peace, Will Smith. Like I had those guys who were champions and, 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 and you know, led by example. But one thing they did, even though they made us do a lot of stuff, uh, they listened to us, you know. And I think having a young group that want to be better, you know, that want to do good, you can see what their work ethic. So now I think for us old heads, we have to listen to, you know, how they go about things and how they react to things and their approach to a lot of things. And then once we can understand their angle, you know, then we can just guide them on the right path, you know. And as y'all can see when y'all here, y'all see these guys actually, you know, busting their behind and, and actually one competitive and but both back and forth is an up and down flow, offense, defense, offense, defense, you know. And I, and I enjoy that. I like that, right. So uh, I think that's one of the things being a vet is being able to listen to the locker room, being able to listen to the guys individually and being able to help them find a solution to get better and want to do good and stay on a positive, you know, stay in a positive direction. Let me ask you this question, just my <laughs> understanding. When you have a practice like today where Tua just easily moves the team the length of the field, during the, the scrimmage-like situation, but then gets back in there for final situation, has to score, and then throws the interception to Javon Holland do you, in a play where it seems like he had to score. Mm -hmm. Do you as a defensive player look at that as, okay, we win, 
or we lost. We won. Right. I mean, you look at it like this. At the end of the day, we're, we're, we're a team, right, offense and defense. So for us as a defense to be able to stop adversity in that sense, right, is a good thing. But for as an offense to get going like that, then we go back to the film and we look at what could we done better. You know, so to put us on, like to, to make us fight the way we was fighting, you know, was a great thing, you know, and I understand like I understand your question, but I look at it like as a defense, as a team, we won because the C2 to be able to do his thing like he was doing in practice, you know, and we have good days and we have bad days. We just got to be more consecutive with our good days and our bad days, you know. So I, I think now that we got that out the way, you know, everybody's going to go back to the film, break it down and then just make something happen different next time, you know? Just piggybacking off of that, I asked Sam earlier when you could hear the fans cheering for Tua making those deep passes to Tyreek. He said that it, it, it's caused us beef. Like, <laughs> there's a divide between the offense and the defense. Yeah. I just wanted to know your perspective on that. I mean, I enjoy it. Like, I, I, you know, that was, like, I, I, ever since I've been in the league, you know, it's always been that type of competitive nature. You talk junk to one another, but you brothers at the end of the day. And, I, and that's one thing, when you see that in practice, and everybody can shake hands, you know, and have love for one another, and respect for one another after the fact, it's a great practice, you know, because at the end of the day, it's an entertainment business, right? So, you know, the fans, y'all entertain, you got a smile on your face asking a question because it was a good, it was good entertainment, right? All right. <laughs> John, from your years of experience in the league, how is the wide zone scheme that Mike is installing with his offense and offensive line, how is that challenging for defensive line? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, um, it's different. It's different, you know. I'm used to the the old San Fran with the Frank Gores, you know, the eye backs when they coming downhill, you know, and then this gap scheme. But uh, I mean, you know, uh, the the league is very trendy, you know, and a lot of things change every year. So um, it's a good thing because of the fact that we have to be more cognizant that we can't just let our feet be in quicksand. We got to be able to react because you never know what we're gonna get. But going against that every day allow us to be prepared, you know, for whatever team is out there and whatever scheme they have, because now we'll be able to adjust, you know. Does it force you to move more? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It forces us to move. We gotta be, you know, like me personally, like uh, I'm. I have to be more like a student of the game, where it was pretty much, you know, real simple for me personally. But now. The way how Mike orchestrated the offense and, and Frank, I've been with Frank in New Orleans, right? So uh, the way how they go about things is different. So I got to really uh, hone in on my technique. So if if I don't do something, even though I'm the oldest in the room, Clark be on my ass, jinx, jinx, jinx. So, you know, and, and it's good, man. I enjoy that. And it allow us to be better players at the end of the day. You mentioned the, uh, the weight loss. Uh, was it last year coaching staff wanted you heavier this year? Lighter? Was that the motivation? or, or nah, was always, Man, listen, when you're a nose tackle, it's always going to be some form of, uh, of, of, hey, you need to get down or you need to do this. It's just the, it's the game, man. Like, you know, we're moving more now than we were last year type, you know, and, and just it is what it is. I'm a nose tackle. There's nothing pretty about my job. I got two guys on me all the time. I got to make the, the line, free the linebackers. It is what it is. So. Uh, fluctuating weight at your position? Nah, uh, do you nah, feel a difference? Nah, because um, I just work. I, I, I'm, I'm zoned in, man. Like, I just move, you know, because at the end of the day, when everything's said and done, I'm going to get the six pack, and then we're not going to be talking about this weight. So, I, I'm, you know, it really doesn't bother me. I just like to get the job done. John, you brought, you brought your career journey. What are the pros and cons of going from one team to another? Something that's like four teams in four years. Uh, I make a comparison like this. Um, I I was one of the guys. I was I was a JUCO player, being from Connecticut, right? So when you're a JUCO player, you only have like a year to be relevant to get big time offers, and that's how I look at it. Because when you go to a new team, nobody know who you are. They may heard of you, but they don't know you. So I have to do something or try to show up some way somehow for for the team and the organization to trust me. You know, so that's how I take it. Like as a you know. Being a journeyman, you have to do something. You have to stand out. And when, like I said, coming from Connecticut to Mississippi Gulf Coast, you know, shout out to Mississippi Gulf Coast, um, you have to be relevant within a short amount of time in order to have an opportunity. So that's how I look at it. John, and then you be a quick, quick follow up in this particular case. So you were with the Dolphins two years ago, mm -hmm. and so obviously you did something that they liked to, for them to bring you back. And, yeah, I'm a worker, man. You know, uh, uh, I'm, 
I'm quiet. You know, you don't hear anything about me off the field. Uh, unless if I'm trying to do something positive or I'm cycling on A1A, right? Um, and then outside of that, I like to come here and I, I try to be like a mentor to the young guys, right? Uh, I can remember when Christian, his first year when I came here in um, 19, when we played Baltimore and, you know, so on and so forth. I remember a lot of these guys, Zach, when he first came in, we call him Zach Sealer, but when he first came in, he didn't even know what he was, you know, I'm telling Zach, hey, shoot this gap, right? So I think um, the organization, you know, uh, know who I am and understand me as a person and as a player where they can trust me and and feel comfortable enough to be like, hey, I know John is going to be a good role model or have some type of positive influence in the locker room and on the field, no matter what the scenario is, you know? Would you like to coach the NFL or college ranks when your career is, is uh, done? Uh, right now, it's too early to say. You know, too early to say right now. If if the opportunity presents itself and and is with somebody who who I know, then maybe. But I like to take like a when it's said and done, I'm gonna need that. You know, <laughs> I'm gonna need that. You know, and then um, but I, I I enjoy. I can see why a lot of these coaches coach. You know, giving uh, helping kids come in the league. What, and helping them understand their opportunity and being able to help them take fully advantage of their opportunity and change the, their dynamics and, and their generational dynamics. I think so. I think John, so. You mentioned, oh, sorry, go ahead. John, I see you have the current logo and the throwback logo. I just was curious. So, uh, as far <laughs> as which, which one do you prefer? I like them both. You know, uh, I like them both. I'm a supporter of the brand total, you know, the whole brand. So. You know, I'm an old guy, right? You know, I'm older than Clark, right? So, you know, the throwback is, you know, I, I like the 90s. Would you be opposed of, of the team wearing that uh, complete season? Or, or, like, are you open to whatever this jersey schedule is for, for the year? I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm a nose tackle. There's not a lot of swag where we at, bro. <laughs> on the field, there's not a lot of swag, bro. So um, I couldn't even give you a, a, a dope answer on that one because I'm a nose tackle. The swag is not with us right now. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it. You mentioned Zach and Christian a few times. That's 2019 season, their first year here with the Dolphins. What stands out to you the most about their growth from then to now? Um, their bond, right? Uh, uh, I look at it like, um, you ever see the movie, like the, I ain't see the old one, but the new one, Miami Vice with Jamie, you know, and they have like a bond, right? Like they, they beef, sometimes you'll catch them, they're beefing, but they know how to work and feed off each other, they get the job done, and I see them, you know, taking charge, right? Like, I can, I actually see that, you know, Zach calling, see Zach calling, you know, orchestrating the defense and, and pointing out little things here and there, and then Christian is uh, uh, just, he don't talk. He just zone out and then shoot the gap or do what he need to do. And Zach feed off of it. And I think that's one thing I seen when I came back um, is the chemistry that they that they have and that they built when I was going. Um, I was just saying, you know, some of the some of the D tackles got the arm sleeve now, so you might have to put that on. Yeah, I'm gonna work on no, it. I'm talking, I'm, about, I'm talking about I'm talking about the the uh, for the, the drip. The drip. With the jersey, they got the arm sleeves. So. Oh, like right, right. Yeah, I'm, I work on it, man. I, I'm see, I play with no gloves, man. It's like my hands, like I'm just old school, man. <laughs> Y'all have a blessed one. Thank you.